Hi. In the previous session, we have started learning exception handling. Exceptional handling, we have already done the try and catch block, and we have seen a format exception, improper format exception. Now we are going to continue with the other concepts of exception handling. The resource which we are currently referring to is the standard resource from Oracle's documentation from the category exceptions. And here is the exceptions documentation from Java, which we are using. Now we'll get into the Eclipse code. So we have been working in the Eclipse workspace. Yes. And this was the example we did yesterday's yes. session. Okay. So we made an example known as the exception test. And within the exception test, we have calculated the heart rate of a user. And then we uh, handled the input mismatch exception. Now, we can also do one more thing here. When we were handling this exception, I'll quickly run it. So uh, if we were putting some improper values, we are getting our custom message, please enter integer only. What you can also do is we can also get to see the system generated exception message. Okay. And this you can do it by accessing your object E and you can get the message. So there are various options. There is a throwable get localized message, get message. Now these are the two options which we can use. So what it does get localized message creates a localized description of the throwable subclasses may override the method in order to produce a local specific message. Similarly, we get a get message which returns the detail message string of the throwable. Okay. So we can also no. use e dot get message and we can print that. Okay. So what's the difference between the two? Like so one is a, yeah. another one is a descriptor. Okay. We can print both of these out system dot out dot print ln. dot get localized message. Okay, so I'm going to run it. And if I put some individual values, so they have not specified any get message or uh, in the input mismatch exception. Okay, but somehow in other handlers, what we can do is we can quickly see what else we can do. We can in fact have a multiple catch statement. And let's say before the catch input mismatch, what I really want to do is I'll just handle the standard way of handling the exception using the exception class and using an object E. Okay. And what I'll do, I'll just, uh, we can do it this way also. Let me just see. So the issue here. So what I can do is let me just comment it for a moment, and then I'll show. So we can handle the exception E, and we can get message here system dot out dot print ln and we can get into something like get message okay. so first let me just print it that way so this exception class is capable of handling any kind of exception if you are unknown if you don't know what what might uh, what might come you know uh, with respect to disruption of the program so it's an easy thing to handle all the exceptions with the exception class but when you use exception, you carry a lot of libraries of exception. So it makes your program eventually heavy. So if you want to keep your program light, you want to use minimum 
code and in that case you always try to use the exception handling classes which are meant to handle a specific exception only okay so here are put the values so it doesn't have a message here i don't know e dot get message okay so it's not throwing uh, the message okay anyways so what we can do is i'll just try to check it with that no i think we are not throwing any messages that's why we are getting null anyways you can see that example with the others with the other you know with the other classes or with the other kind of exceptions which gets generated so anyways let's just get back to the code so here we started working on catching and handling the exceptions so now you have already seen in order to use the three exception handlers we use the try catch and the finally block to write an exception handler then the try with resources statement introduced in java standard ed edition is explained here the try with resources statement is particularly suited to situations that closable resources such as streams input stream output streams whenever we use we handle it with the other way the try with resources so what we will do let's have a quick example of what have they done here okay so there is an index out of bound exception which might throw here okay okay anyways so it's a sample program which they have shown and they have not thrown anything as of now here uh, they have not handled anything as of here so what we can do is we can quickly watch out the try block so the try block the catch and the finally blocks are handled in such a way which you already know you can use a try block which you can cover the piece of code which you want to be protected then you have a catch blocks so you can have multiple catch blocks okay the way i was specifying so we can have multiple yes. catch blocks as in we can have a try with a piece of code and then we can have the multiple catch blocks in order to handle multiple types of exceptions okay similarly <clears throat> there's a finally block okay so the finally block always executes when the try block exits okay this means sometimes what might happen there is a certain case where the exception has not been executed okay which means the exception has not been handled or there was no exception then what it does it definitely takes you to the finally block to ensure that the program ran successfully okay so what it does the try and the finally block this ensures that the finally block is executed even if an unexpected exception occurs but finally is useful for more than just exception handling it allows the programmer to avoid having clean up code accidentally bypassed by a return continue or break statement putting clean up code in a finally block is always a good practice even when no exceptions are anticipated which means what is what are they try to say they say let's say you have a method and you are trying to process some data and finally you have to return some output okay so whenever you have to return some output or you might need to use a code which might continue or break uh, situations might be involved so all of these three things needs to be done in a finally block always okay this will ensure that the program ran fine is that clear yes so what we can actually do we can write a finally block and there we can work out on the final part which means the objective of the method or objective of that piece of code that should be taken care of in the finally block okay so what we'll do we'll get into the finally block and we'll see what do we have here 
and then there is private resources which we will be working out in a little while so let me take you to another example which is try catch and finally okay so let's just create a new class okay let's say this is going to be try catch finally test i'm going to get the stuff generated and here is the piece of code which we want to run okay now what we'll do here let's say we are going to handle certain exceptions and we have to define the finally block as well and i'm going to write a very simple method let's say what am i going to do i'm going to take scanner sc is equal to new scanner system dot in before that i okay so we got the scanner now what am i going to do i'm going to write we are going to write a function let's say i'll say enter number 1 so there are going to be two numbers and i'm going to write a simple you know the addition logic and i'm going to say enter number 2 before that i will be using the scanner so i'll use sc dot next integer and i'm going to save it into integer a similarly i'm going to use sc dot next integer and i'm going to save it into integer b okay and finally what are we going to do? we are going to call a function known as add which is going to take a and b okay and we are going to create this method add integer this is going to be let's say private static void add with integer a and integer b okay what we will do within this block let's say we are going to write a try catch block a catch block okay and a finally block this is going to be the standard way of writing the code okay so let's say you're going to have a add function within the add function what are we going to do we are going to keep a code in the try section then in case if any issue occurs we are going to catch it and finally we are going to return the output okay so okay. let's see how we are going to have it so we are going to do let's say i have uh, i'm going to return an integer back so i'm going to change it from void to integer because i want to return an information remove the static yeah we'll add a return statement so now what we will do let's say we are going to get something like i created a variable integer c is equal to 0 by default we got into the block a plus b okay where we calculated exception let's say uh let's say we are going to get system dot out dot print ln please enter integers only okay and finally in the return block we are going to call return c okay can you see that yes finally block does not complete normally we'll see okay why is it showing this but we got a return in this way so i'm going to 
or let's say what are we going to do we're going to give a print statement also and we'll see finally executed okay so i'm going to run this and we'll test and we have to do one more thing we also need to print the response private static and we are going to get it into let's say d and i'm going to print d. oh sorry let's we'll see the the output is C. Oh, sorry. D. Okay, something like this we're going to get. So when I run, it says enter number one. I said put 10. Then it is asking enter number two. I'll say 20. And we got the output is 30. And you can see that the finally block executed even when the values were authentic. Okay. Similarly, when I do certain exceptions, let's say I put in some false values. So I've quickly got, you know, you can see that we have quickly got the exception that this is an input mismatch exception. Okay. Yes. Now what is happening here in this case, we have already landed up into an appropriate exception. Okay. Now, and why this happened? This happened here, here itself. It has still not got into the second exception block. That is why the program disrupted. So what we can do, you can also write this block into, let's say, the try catch. Okay. okay. So it's always a good idea. Let's say we are going to say input mismatch exception okay so we got the Okay, so we got it something like this. So I got 30, I got 50. And the finally executed, okay. And when I get back into some bad values, so it says, please enter integers only. And the program has been closed by handling the exception in the first case itself. Okay, can you see that? Yes. So now what we can do is, so this is the part of finally that finally has to be returned in such a way because it is going to execute hundred percent once the try block is exited. Okay. Got it. Here also we can define the finally code and we can say system dot out dot print ln. Integers not found. That's it. So we'll quickly check back the finally in the first case as well. So I've put in some values, and now you can see that it executed the catch and it executed the finally also. Okay, can you see that? So whenever you are having an exception the finally block will always execute in both the cases, whether is it an exception block or it is a, a normal uh, execution with the correct values. Got it?
Now, okay. So what next? We are going to do. We are going to read about the try with resources statement. Okay. So this is a try statement that declares one or more resources in it. A resource is an object that must be closed after the program is finished with it. Okay. So the try with resources statement ensures that each resource is closed at the end of the statement. Any object that implements auto closable, which includes all objects which implement Java closable class, can be used as a resource. Okay. So the following example reads first line from a file. It uses an instance of buffered reader to read data from the file. Buffered reader is a resource that must be closed after the program is finished with it. Okay. So what are they trying to do? They have they are writing a try block. Okay. And instead of just just putting the content in the try block, what are they trying to do? They are trying to write a resource within the try block itself within the try uh, parenthesis okay so what is happening currently we need to ensure that whenever we are using any such way where we are using buffered reader to read the line from a file so what do we need to ensure we need to ensure that the resource needs to be closed once the process is done okay so within the try block what we can do, you can read the line and in the finally, you have to close it explicitly. Okay. Once you are done reading the buffered reader, but when you're using try with resources, it will automatically close once the statement has been executed. Okay. This means, let's say you have written a file buffered reader. Uh, you have, you have use this class buffered reader. Once you are done with return dot read line automatically, once that try blocks exit, this buffered reader is going to be closed automatically. Is that clear? Okay. So that is the utility of try with resources statement. Okay. So that is also a good way of uh, using so the we don't have to close it. Yes. You don't have to close it explicitly. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yes. So that is the try with resources statement. Now we are going to check into how to throw the exceptions. So because there are various ways, we have the chained exceptions. We have, you can create the exception classes. So we are going to quickly understand how you throw this, the exceptions. Okay. So you, before you catch an exception, some code must throw one. Any code can throw an exception, your code, code from a package written by someone else, such as the packages that come with the Java platform or the Java runtime environment from everywhere, the uh, exceptions can be thrown. Okay. Now, what do we mean by throwing an exception? All methods use the throw statement to throw an exception. The throw statement requires a single argument, which is a throwable object. Okay. Throwable objects are instances of any subclass of the throwable class. And here is an example of the throw statement. So you're going to call throw and you're going to create an object. Okay. You can throw any kind of exception as in you can throw input mismatch exception, or you can throw any other exception as required. Okay. So now you can see that in case if some, uh, if, if there is a pop happening in a data structure. So if the size of that object is automatically zero, then it is going to throw an throw a stack exception, which means that stack is already empty. Otherwise it will do the processing. Okay. So what we can do, we can actually throw the exception and let us have an example of throwing the exceptions. Okay. So we'll get in here and we will write a new class 
and this is going to be a throw exception test. Okay. So in the throw exception test, what are we going to do? In the arguments. Now, what are we going to do? Suppose we were using the same program. Okay. Um, okay. So let's say scanner SC is equal to new scanner. System dot input. Import the scanner class. Okay. Let's say, what are we going to do? Let's say we're going to take, again, we'll have that uh, formula, let's say, uh, let's say take any simple equation again, the calculation of the heart rate. Okay. So what am I going to do? I'll just say integer age is equal to SC dot next integer. And let's just print a statement system dot out dot print. Please enter your age. Okay, so we are going to get the age. And we will say if age is equal to zero. Suppose a person is entering an integer. Okay. But yes, he is putting zero as the age. So again, it's not the correct way. Okay. Else if age is greater than hundred, let's say, or let's say if the age is greater than 120, because if somebody is saying my age is 2000, so that is not the correct way of implementation, right? So what yes. we can do is we can, we can uh, initiate an exception. Okay. Then what we can do is in case of both of these are fine, if it is uh, greater or equal to zero, or let's say smaller equal to zero or greater equal to 120, then we are going to raise the exception. Otherwise, we'll say integer heart rate, or let's say system dot out dot friend ln your max heart rate is, and we are going to do 220 minus h. Okay, so we are going to get this calculated. Okay, now what are we going to do here? We are going to throw throw an exception. Okay, so you have defined throw, and you want to throw a kind of an exception. Okay, so what kind of exception you want to throw? You can quickly create a new object. Okay, and let's say I will say number format exception. I do need to check number format exception. Okay. So instead of, instead of the, the try catch block where we have to enter integers only, this time we are going to get a number format exception. Okay. Similarly, again, I'm also throwing number format exception here. Number format exception. Okay. So instead of handling, now we are throwing the exceptions. Okay. So once I run it, so it is going to ask, please enter your age. And I will say my age is zero. 
so when i enter now it will throw an exception and what exception it threw it said it's a number format exception that you are trying to enter age 0 that is why this exception is happening is that clear okay i believe you got it yes similarly in case if i say if my age is 100 so i'm going to get my max heart rate as 20 but in case if i go beyond 120 okay i say 121 so again what am i going to get i'm going to get the number format exception okay okay so we can raise any exception as per our choice okay depending on what wrong a user is doing and this we implement in those cases let's say we are writing a function which will be used by other programmers so in case if they are putting in certain bad values to the, to our method we need to throw the exception so that they can handle it in their programs got it yes so similarly we can throw the exceptions also okay so we now know how to handle the exception we now know how to handle exceptions with a finally block because finally is going to be executed all the time and then we also understand how to throw an exceptions in certain cases okay and we also know about try with resources in case if you want to use an auto closable resource it will automatically be closed once you exit out of the try block okay then what do we have is there are certain examples of chained exceptions an application often responds to an exception by throwing another exception in effect the first exception causes the second exception it can be very helpful to know when one exception causes another chained exceptions help the pro programmer do this the following are the methods and constructors in throwable that support chained exceptions so what you can do is in a throwable you can get the cause of why it happened then you can initialize the cause with a throwable you can also pass in a string and the throwable object and you can directly pass the throwable case okay now what is happening in case if you are handling an exception let's say there is some input output exception some improper thing happened then what is going to do you will be handling one exception and accordingly you will be throwing the other exception okay can you see that so here is an example so you are handling one exception but naturally what you are doing you are throwing another exception in it instead of the number of, instead of let's say what i am doing instead of input mismatch we can execute you know the number format exception got it so that is how we can actually do chained exceptions also okay so let's get it to this example of chained exceptions so i'm going to create a new class and i'm going to call it as chained exceptions okay so we are here we are writing for chained exceptions let's call it as public static void main string arguments okay so we got this main stub now what do we want we want to have a chained exception okay again so we'll get into the same example of throwing the chained exception so let's use scanner sc is equal to new scanner again sc dot in no oh, sorry system dot in We'll import the scanner. Okay. Now what? What am I going to do? I'm going to calculate the standard ideal weight of a user. Okay. Let's say we are writing the code here. 
to get the standard ideal weight of the user. And for this, what do we need is we need height. And we'll quickly check the formula of calculating the ideal weight of user. Okay. So ideal weight calculate. Mathematical equation. Okay, here. So it says ideal body weight is computed in men as 50 plus 0 0.91 into height in centimeters minus 152.4. Okay, so I'm going to copy this mathematical equation and I'm let's say I'm going to calculate the ideal body weight of the user. Okay, so this is my standard equation, which I'm going to implement. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get the height of the user out dot println. I'll say, please enter your height, enter your height in centimeters. Okay. So we're going to get SC dot next float. This could be a float value. I'm going to get float height. Okay. And I'll say the ideal weight float ideal weight should be 50 plus 0 0.91 into height in centimeters so which means height is going to be h e i g h t minus 152.4 this is something is going to be calculated in this way okay and what are we going to do we're going to add a cast to the float. We're going to type cast it. Acha. Why it's saying cast the float? Sorry? So why it is saying that we should cast it to float? So it is already in float only. And it's already in float, but actually it takes it by default as a double value. So if you can change it to double you're going to get it fine. The currently it is returning in a double format. That is the standard way it is using. So instead of float, we can change it to double. So it will automatically solve it. Okay. So now what we have got, we got the double ideal weight. Okay. And we are going to do system.out.println. My ideal weight is or we can say your ideal weight is plus the ideal weight. Okay, I believe we are clear till here. Now what we want to do, we want to implement the chained exception, which means I'm going to write a try block. I'm going to write a find catch block in the catch block, I'm going to handle input mismatch exception E. Okay. We're going to import input mismatch exception. But instead of printing the input mismatch exception, we're going to throw a new exception, which will say number format exception. Let's see. Okay. Yes. So in so this becomes a chained exception. No. Okay. So yes. which means I am in my program. What am I doing is I'm just saying it's not input mismatch. It is a number format exception. Okay. okay. Now, so we can quickly run it. We can go. Okay. 
please enter your height in centimeters. That's why I say my height is 169 centimeters. So it will save me your ideal weight is 65 kgs. Okay. okay. But if I run it again and if I put in some upper 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 values, instead of the input mismatch exception, now it is raising the number format exception. That you're not putting the number in an appropriate format. Got okay. it? Yes. So this is the concept of chain exception. So now we are done with all the examples of exceptions. Okay. Now you have some controversies, advantages, you can read about it. There are certain questions and exercises which you will go through. Okay. And see if you are able to implement all these four exercises, make a code in your Eclipse and submit it on uh, your GitHub. Hello. Okay. Post on GitHub and share the link of the Git in the trailer. Okay. okay. Got it. So today we are done with the concept. So can I post on your repo in uh, GitHub so can, I, or I have to create my own? You can uh, post on my repo also. If you want, I can create a branch for you. You can keep it posted there. That can be done okay. or else it would be better that if you create your own repo, because so uh, I'll create my own. Yes. The benefit would be because you will be having all your code in sequence and eventually it will improve yes. your GitHub profile. How, okay. how many times you are committing, you know, so it will eventually okay. give you a good rating on GitHub and uh, because it's easy and GitHub is like a resume for developers nowadays, right? About what all have you done? Okay. Yes. So we are done with the concepts of exception handling in a very proper way with all the ways of handling the exception with try catch, handling it with finally, handling try with resources statements, then throwing the state uh, exceptions and maintaining and managing the chained exceptions. Okay. So this is all about exceptions. Rest we will continue in the next session.